Mexico. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Kirk Kim. I'm working for Samsung STS. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, everybody have enjoying the, uh, this uh, summit. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about the uh, Samsung STS personal cloud. Yesterday, I was uh, doing a, a duty at the booth, and a lot of people come by and ask me, what is a personal means? Well, uh, in this case, a personal means uh, B2C. Uh, as you know, uh, we are providing a lot of different services through uh, the uh, devices. So uh, uh, today, we're going to talk about that and uh, uh, what we did and what we're going to do in the future as well. Uh, so uh, before we actually start, I'd like to do uh, some quick introduction of uh, our company. Um, basically, Samsung SDS is uh, number one IT Korean uh, in, in Korea. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, about 14,000 uh, people and the 5.7 billion. The, uh, one thing particular about the Samsung SDS is uh, providing a, uh, infrastructures to uh, Samsung groups, such as a data center, um, the, uh, uh, or so uh, cloud infrastructures, and so forth. So uh, SDS has uh, been working on this uh, cloud based on OpenStack for a couple of years. Actually, uh, I was here uh, in, in, uh, in US. That was a couple of years ago in San, uh, San Francisco, 2011. That was uh, probably the second uh, OpenStack summit. And uh, at the time, I wasn't really sure about the OpenStack. Is it really going to take off? Actually, I was looking at some other solutions at the, at, at the time. For example, as you well know, uh, CloudStack is one of them. And the uh, VMware is another. So uh, why do we choose OpenStack at the time? I will tell you a little bit later. So today, essentially, what we're going to talk about is uh, uh, ecosystem, uh, how our cloud fits into the uh, B2C ecosystem. And, uh, uh, and also, uh, uh, we're going to talk about details of uh, SPCS in terms of uh, features and uh, history. And then uh, we're going to talk about the uh, global infrastructure rollout based on the hybrid, because I think that's the key differentiation between the, uh, uh, how we want to build a global infrastructure compared to uh, what's been doing in the uh, uh, other ways. And the last thing is we're going to talk about uh, what we learned from all this. So first, I'd like to tell you uh, what we think of a B2C cloud service looks like. Uh, obviously, if you look at the uh, infrastructure, here, uh, it's a consist of uh, public cloud and the uh, the private cloud that we are building, plus global management and operations. Uh, well, uh, I will tell you a little bit later that the, uh, why we are looking at all three options, because uh, if you look at the, uh, just looking at private cloud, maybe it's good for certain things, but uh, in order to build a uh, really large scale global infrastructure, we really need private cloud as a part of the solution. And on top of that, uh, we are building a different type of a services, uh, message type, content, storage type. Well, we made a very generic services because uh, uh, we really like to focusing on the infrastructure today rather than service. But the uh, capability of uh, supporting 100 million points, endpoints or devices. Okay? And uh, obviously, we are trying to uh, also roll out uh, globally, meaning that the, uh, in Americas, and uh, EMEA and Asia, maybe a couple of locations each. Okay, so this is uh, what we are thinking of uh, the uh, ecosystem looks like. Next, if you look at the uh, uh, why uh, we build our cloud the way we did, is because it's driven by the business. Really, uh, first, uh, the business is uh, divided into three different categories. One is uh, predictable high performance. Well, as you know, uh, a lot of times uh, when we are building a uh, 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 catalog, uh, uh, the, uh, you need high performance uh, storage or even CPUs. And predictable is very important. Uh, and then, uh, Samsung has a very special requirements for the security policy, which is something that I will tell you a little bit later. 
and then uh, low and uh, cost flexible infrastructure. In this case, a flexible means customized. Uh, so uh, these are the things that the, uh, we need. Answer was, well, we need a private cloud for doing this. And uh, because of the low cost and the flexibility, we need OpenStack. And uh, we need a, a dedicated infrastructure. What this means is uh, more like a bare metal, where we can be using it for uh, Hadoop or even for uh, Cassandra. Uh, and then um, the, uh, the other requirement that we had was unpredictable demand or low upfront investment. Well, as you know, uh, this is a huge infrastructure, so uh, it will cost a lot of money. Uh, some numbers we see in the market, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, Apple, they said they spend $7 billion, or some other companies spend so much money. Uh, Samsung is a very frugal, or they're <laughs> very uh, uh, conservative. So they don't like to spend a lot of money up front. They like to understand the, uh, what we need to do in order to build the infrastructure step by step. So uh, we decided to actually using a, a private cloud plus public cloud in combination, okay? Uh, in order to do that, we need a cloud controller and uh, cloud busting or DR. Now, the key is the scalability and the cost. This is the key to success of building a large global scale. And then uh, on top of that, in order to build a uh, different type of a public cloud and hybrid, which is a very complex uh, operation problem, we need a unified cloud management system in order to operate that. And then also we need a, a global deployment that meets the user's performance. Uh, what they mean is uh, uh, if you are using a device uh, one place and then go to another place, if the infrastructure is now nearby, then performance is, uh, is not gonna be as good. So uh, sometimes we use actually CDN, ADN uh, type of uh, technology in order to compensate that. So these are the, uh, our requirements and these are the uh, directions that we are actually taking. So if you look at it in a nutshell, the private cloud, hybrid, and the global operation. These are the things uh, we are looking at to build a right type of a cloud. Now, <clears throat> Let's look at the more deeper into uh, our SPCS further. Uh, actually, this is, uh, uh, I'd like to tell you about the uh, history a little bit. Uh, I already told you that the, uh, uh, we are looking at the OpenStack-based uh, cloud two years ago. And uh, uh, at the time, we were really concerned because uh, Diablo was uh, very unstable and it uh, didn't have a lot of uh, features that we need. So we have to build our own customized um, the uh, solutions on top of it. Although it's not actually going into the contribution, but we have to build it our own in order to actually prove that uh, the private cloud is uh, right for our solution. So uh, essentially, we built it based on the Nova, Swift, Glance, and Keystone, but we customized a few things along the way, which probably could be thrown away in the future, but this is what we did. Auto boot volume from SAN. Well, <clears throat> The, uh, the boot can be done either through the local disk or the, from the SAN. And uh, uh, we decided to uh, boot it from the uh, SAN because of a more reliable, like uh, enterprise solutions. We also did a Nova backup service. But there are several reasons why we did this at the beginning because uh, in order to build a uh, backup for the images, uh, we could have a uh, Swift like Amazon or we could build uh, our own uh, local storage. That's what we did. Uh, so we did a uh, Nova backup service. And then uh, network metering using IP tables. Well, again, uh, we have to build our own special um, IP tables, differentiates between the uh, public IPs and the uh, uh, private IP so that the, uh, we can meter the uh, public IPs. And then, obviously, uh, most of the people build their own scheduler like we did. So, uh, these are the uh, common uh, OpenStack that we built, and based on this, we actually add a few other additional stacks. Uh, obviously, in order to build uh, right type of uh, <coughs> solutions so that we can provide a service to the customer, uh, you cannot just build it based on OpenStack only. You have to build additional things. These are the things that we actually did. So uh, we built our own service portal for the users, and then for the operator, we build our own management portal, BSS 
and then automation. Uh, we did it based on the chef. Again, uh, this is uh, something that we are continuously building and make sure that the AI will help us to uh, build a automation in such a way that less number of people can operate the cloud. The monitoring, uh, we use Nagios. Again, there are three different type of uh, monitoring we are actually looking into. One is uh, uh, infrastructure level, the other one is VM level, and the other one is application level. But obviously, uh, when we are providing a service to the, our customer, we are looking at all three different monitoring, even though we are only talking about cloud here today. And then next one is uh, network, hardware load balancer. Well, uh, we use a HA proxy for the uh, software load balancer as well, but uh, the key uh, differentiation at the beginning was that we are trying to use a hardware load balancer, which can be shared between the services because of a performance. We are looking at the 100,000 plus uh, transactions per second is a type of uh, transaction we need in order to uh, meet the hour requirements. So that's why we built it. And then last one, uh, we, the uh, Samsung has a very particular about the security. So uh, they require a uh, physical firewall, not only at the uh, <coughs> front of the network, but also uh, behind, such as a DB side. So that's another thing that we have to put it in. And then DDoS and IPS is something that we are uh, putting in some locations and some locations that we didn't. So these are the things that we did and that we are going, we are doing. But in the future, we are also doing in these areas. Well, bell metal provisioning. Um, the cloud is mostly based on VM, like uh, Amazon. However, uh, if we are running into uh, uh, Hadoop or a lot of other uh, particular applications, you, sometimes you need bare metal. So uh, we decided to integrate it, that as a part of our solution as well. Now, uh, if you are growing the uh, uh, services very big, then what you need is a virtual network. If you are building a very small network, uh, one zone uh, with a very small uh, number of uh, computers, but then you might not need the uh, uh, the uh, virtual network, but if you start to big, uh, scale it, then you do need it. And then, top of that, we need a VPC. Why do we need a VPC? Because we want to isolate the uh, certain services from the others. Even though uh, uh, we are using it for most of our uh, customers, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, uh, very dear to us, but still, they like to be separated, and uh, so we need a VPC in order to expand our uh, network in the future. So basically what we did is uh, uh, December 11, we actually stand up a Swift based on the Diablo. And uh, uh, April 12, uh, we stand up access version of Nova and Swift. And then uh, September 12, we actually deploy and stand up in China, access version of Nova. And then now uh, we are actually um, the uh, in test and uh, ready to uh, deploy based on the foursome Nova. And then uh, end of uh, July, we expect to bring it up the hybrid. Uh, we are closely working with uh, Rice Scale at the moment and then try to make that happen by uh, July. So that's where we are today. So this is uh, uh, something that I'd like to go over one more time, even though I mentioned it why hybrid is so important for the global infrastructure. There are additional uh, reasons why. And also, I'd like to uh, uh, use this opportunity to uh, define what is a hybrid. There are so many different versions of hybrid, but if you look at the Wikipedia, um, then obviously one definition stands out, which is based on the private cloud and the public cloud, and that they are joined. Uh, and they are based on the, some type of a controller. Now, there is a, we add a couple of additional uh, um, the, uh, uh, elements or parameters to this. Uh, low latency and uh, uh, private network. So that the, uh, it will give you a very strong uh, the hybrid environment for deploy uh, many different ways, which I will explain to you later time. 
So uh, uh, in this type of a hybrid environment, uh, there are certain advantages that we can see. One is the, uh, we can build very agile infrastructure all out to meet the time to market. Um, obviously, everybody, when they don't have any infrastructure, the best way to <coughs> provide a service is using a, a public cloud, uh, Amazon, for example. However, uh, the, uh, you can do so much, and then, uh, uh, then you like to have a high performance or you need a additional uh, uh, reasons, such as you like to protect your data internally as you're supposed to expose to the public side, for example. So you like to build your private cloud, but uh, you, you, don't, you don't like to build a huge private cloud at the beginning because you don't know how big it would be. B2C service itself is very difficult to predict. Uh, Facebook is growing very fast uh, last few years. That's very successful. But there are so many services out there not successful or they fail. So what are you going to do uh, after build it and then uh, are you going to just to throw your infrastructure away or are you going to use a, a, a cloud uh, to uh, the, uh, control the, uh, your resources? So at the beginning, you want to start with a very small uh, private cloud based on the one zone. And then uh, using a, a public cloud as a secondary available zone. Then as you grow, uh, size of a private cloud will grow, and then public will grow. Obviously, <clears throat> uh, we like to use mostly for the uh, cloud busting, which is uh, something that helps us to uh, uh, demand uh, control. But at the same time, this model is not just uh, for uh, one region, but it can be duplicate the other regions. So wherever there is a public cloud, we like to be right next to it and then build it very similar way, which gives a, a very robust uh, resource control and the utility or utilization. And the next one is lever <coughs> leveraging the public cloud services. Uh, well, uh, the reason why uh, the, uh, using a public cloud is that they have a lot of other additional services that private cloud might not be able to provide right away. For example, email and the message queue type of uh, uh, services that we can take advantage of. Uh, and then also we can use a public cloud as a DR backup for non-sensitive data in our case. Uh, what is non-sensitive data? Well, uh, personal data could be. However, if we want to uh, have a, a log, that's uh, sensitive to us so that we like to protect that information internal to the private side, for example. Uh, if we want to look at the high utilization rate of a private cloud, yes. Well, typically, uh, when you are uh, rolling out the private cloud, maybe 70% utilization. But if you start using a hybrid, you could probably push it to the 90% so that the AI will give you higher uh, uh, the utilization. Now, there is uh, some drawback as well. That is uh, that you need additional connections to uh, private cloud, uh, public cloud, which is additional cost to the network. And then there is a additional complexity that comes with uh, the uh, private and uh, public cloud as a hybrid. The last one is the uh, predictable investment. Well, uh, you want to control. At the end, this is all about money, right? I mean, we are building a cloud because of, uh, we want to protect our investment and then we weren't able to control the, our, um, the uh, rollout. And uh, I think that this is a, probably the best way to do it at, as far as we can tell. So that's, these are the reasons why we think why uh, we are uh, started looking at the hybrid very closely. So in order to build a uh, good hybrid, uh, we were considering five elements. So first one is a data center, which is uh, uh, we are looking at the uh, uh, very close to the private cloud. Uh, in this case, uh, we decided to build it in Virginia because Virginia is uh, well known for uh, good ISPs and then connections to the public cloud. Um, we are uh, trying to have a latency uh, less than two to three millisecond. And then uh, for network, uh, the, uh, there are several ways of connecting it, but uh, we decided to use a dedicated line. Uh, another way of saying it is a direct connect. Uh, and then we decided to use a, a hybrid controller. There are many uh, uh, so, you know, uh, solutions out there. Uh, one is obviously 
uh, rice scale. And then I don't want to mention others that we evaluated at, the, at this morning because uh, uh, they might offend uh, some of uh, what we, uh, and then besides, the point of uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, design consideration is uh, trying to tell you that the, how, you, how we are looking at the solutions, not just a uh, uh, vendor. The next one is uh, high availability and the DR. Uh, this is a very important because uh, HA gives a, uh, uh, looking at the uh, problem as another available zone, which means the, uh, look at the uh, uh, architecture of a public cloud. They have uh, multiple zones, okay? Imagine that the, uh, if you make another available zone, which has the same type of performance, then the, uh, you don't have to build this, such infrastructure. Not only that, the, uh, you can take advantage of their uh, storage. Storage is very expensive when you start to building a larger scale because uh, you have to have redundancy built in uh, and uh, you, you want to have a regional backup. Uh, for example, Swift requires a three copies minimum in order to uh, have a good SLAs. So uh, uh, why, don't you, why don't we take advantage of uh, uh, the uh, public cloud storage until you are comfortable and uh, ready to build it? And also, uh, the key to uh, uh, having a, a good uh, application, uh, the uh, three-tier type of uh, uh, application is uh, the, uh, something that uh, everybody is uh, looking at. In this case, uh, we are looking at the MySQL. And uh, for that, uh, we are looking at the uh, active standby and uh, uh, like a master and slave so that in case a master goes, then we are like to use a private, a public cloud, <coughs> the uh, uh, slave to promote to the master, for example. That is one way of uh, uh, looking at the problem. The next one is uh, operation and management. Now, this is not that easy. When you start to looking at the uh, multi-cloud, uh, one has a different APIs, and then you have a different way of uh, monitoring. So if you have uh, tools like the right scale, it's uh, very easy to uh, manage. At least uh, uh, that's uh, something that we don't have expertise, so we decided to rely on the right scale's expertise on the monitoring as well as operating and deployments. And that, that really worked out well, so that uh, we are trying to have a uh, POC by uh, end of uh, July. That's our goal at the moment. Okay, this is uh, something that uh, we like to share uh, because this is actually the uh, key to uh, how putting it together between the uh, public and the private cloud. Uh, the uh, network is uh, very, uh, first time if you look at it, it's very complex. But if we start to looking at it very closely, then it's not that difficult. Now, uh, if you are, uh, if you look at the, uh, this diagram, this is the uh, private side, this is the public side. And uh, we are creating a uh, VMs that has uh, private and public. This is uh, something that we are using in Nova, which is uh, essentially uh, uh, flat uh, uh, DHCP uh, architecture. And then uh, we are actually uh, talking to internet through the router. In this case, we have uh, BGP uh, public router. And then uh, when we are co uh, connecting to uh, uh, public cloud, we are using a private BGP router, which is recommended by public cloud solution. And uh, if you look at it, we can not only talk to object storage or their compute resources. And uh, using particularly their uh, public IP addresses, it can be going through our firewall so that they are, they are secured which is an advantage of this architecture. And the second one is that we can also talk to uh, through the internet. Well, in this case, uh, does not have to be in the same region, could be different reasons so that we can communicate. So one is uh, creating a, a network very approximate so that they have a very low latency and uh, uh, you can access to their public storage as well as compute as well as uh, the uh, private VPC uh, resources that you can create. So 
this is the uh, basic uh, underlying uh, architecture of uh, a hybrid that we are trying to build. This is another way of looking at the, how we are deploying the application. But the interesting thing about this is, as I said, uh, at the beginning, we just have two zones. But this can be extended to many zones. For example, if you're using a VPC, this can be uh, available zone can be extended to multiple zones. So that uh, if application engineers are building a, a, a very, very uh, high reliable applications, then probably this is one way of uh, making it happen. Uh, so this is a, just a typical two-tier um, you know, application and the uh, DB uh, model. But uh, this is, can be uh, interestingly expanded to very interesting uh, architecture model. Uh, hybrid controller. Um, there are many different ways of uh, uh, looking at it, but obviously uh, it's uh, good for the deployment and monitoring, and then the uh, auto-scaling and cloud busting. Uh, this is uh, something that we can talk about it probably tomorrow at the uh, right scale session uh, 340. So I don't want to get into the details on this. So after all this, what do we learn? Uh, last two years, we definitely learned a lot. Uh, but I just want to point out a couple of things that we learned. One is, uh, for hybrid, uh, is it not something that uh, we can build ourselves and then deploy it reliably? So uh, having a, a good tools is very important. And uh, it's, uh, without tools, it's very difficult to manage uh, inconsistent APIs. So uh, uh, we are uh, using a right scale to deploy and operate the hybrid cloud. The second one is something that we've been doing in the last couple of years. Um, obviously, uh, OpenStack is a very highly uh, flexible and configurable, uh, especially early days. And as you know, Diablo also did not have enough features, uh, but uh, also a lot of error. So that uh, we didn't have a lack of capacity planning or performance tuning and the network design guide. Uh, but this is just a few things that the, uh, we learned over the years. But one thing that the, uh, we really uh, had a difficulty is longer cycle to operate. Um, in fact, the, uh, very difficult to operate from the Diablo to access, access to the foursome, because there is a no good way of uh, just uh, operating it. So uh, uh, we really uh, re-architect and rebuilding the components every time that uh, we uh, upgraded to the new major uh, cycles. So uh, that's what we learned. Obviously, we can share more, uh, but these are the things that we learned so far, and hopefully it helps to understand and uh, uh, what we can offer to you guys today. Um, any questions? Um, actually, uh, those are uh, confidential information that I don't like to. Um, it's uh, thousands. Yeah. <laughs> this uh, is more for the uh, uh, just a non uh, open stack. Let me put it that way. This particular architecture. All right. In this particular case, we only looked at the. Uh, let me. I repeat the question for, for the gentleman. Actually, you can stand up over there, and then you can repeat yourself. But let me repeat for him. <laughs> the uh, uh, the hybrid that we are considering is uh, both sides was open stack based. Answer was no. Uh, it was uh, on one side, private side was open stack. The other one was not. But uh, the uh, we are looking at the uh, considering uh, another public cloud company who can do this, but uh, we haven't done it yet. Well, uh, because uh, number one was the low cost and the flexibility. Oh, repeat the question. Uh, why do we choose OpenStack? 
even though we had so many problems. Uh, and uh, I think I answered that earlier, that the, uh, uh, at even the time in two years ago, there was uh, so many uh, solutions out there. Cloud Stack was one of them, and the VMware, which was very expensive, which could not be part of our budget. So we decided to take it risk. So uh, I'm glad we did, and that's where we are at today. Yes? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot because uh, the, uh, uh, today uh, I have uh, been told that just to talk about the infrastructure, not the application. That was the instruction that I've given by uh, my uh, legal team. Uh, yeah, we have all that information, but unfortunately I cannot share that information today. <laughs> Right, I have to respect the, uh, because uh, I just want to make, make sure that everybody understands, SDS is building infrastructure, not the applications, okay? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, repeat the question, he said. Uh, the, uh, are we planning to upgrade to Grizzly or force uh, to uh, Havana? Uh, answer is yes. Uh, but right now, uh, uh, we have uh, some customization code, so uh, we have to uh, take a bold move make sure, uh, in the future that we're going to take a trunk uh, based on the Grizzly or Havana so that the, uh, we'll be in line with the OpenStack community. Uh, absolutely. Uh, however, the, uh, there are certain things I can share, certain things I cannot, uh, based on the, uh, uh, for example, OpenStack I can share with you any, uh, any way I can. However, applications and uh, related to the customer requirements, I cannot. Yes? Uh, the uh, question was uh, uh, back in two years ago. What was it? Why we decided to choose over uh, choose OpenStack over uh, CloudStack? Uh, at the time, uh, the main reason was scalability. Uh, we thought that the uh, uh, CloudStack scalability is going to be limited, uh, so that was the main reason. So why we decided to go with uh, OpenStack at the time. Uh, but given the situation today, uh, I think uh, that need to be looked at it again. Yes? Okay. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Yes? Okay. Um, that's. Uh, the, uh, that question is not that easy to repeat. <laughs> Let me go back to that drawing. Here. Um, the, uh, uh, how do we uh, uh, choose this uh, load balancer? No, My, hmm? This one. Would you repeat the question one more time? Okay, uh, the, uh, I don't want to get into the details of uh, how we did it with the application side, but for the generic purpose like this, that I can talk about it. Uh, the, yeah. Over there. Without revealing the actual application detail, um, our general tendency is to move, keep normal workload in the private cloud and move the excess workload into the public cloud. So as a result, you know, uh, when the normal workload, the MySQL masters, which is 
critical for right operations it stays in the private cloud for access load you know when it scales out in the public cloud still the rights will come to the private cloud and we will do the right operations uh, but all the read operations will happen out of the public cloud that way we can shed the load out of that that's the rational behind it okay <laughs> Sentil, you want to stay? <laughs> um, yes, uh, we do encounter uh, the problem. If you if you move away from say OpenStack, if you use any other public cloud, right? Um, yes, there is an image incompatibility. So that's where the he mentioned the cloud management tools is very important, where our applications and our deployment plan is agnostic of that image, right? And you know we can deploy across various clouds and um, so that application runs smoothly. Yeah, so I'm with RightScale. I'm giving a presentation on exactly that tomorrow. If you're more, if you're interested in further details of that, on exactly your question. How that works. Okay, one more. Uh, actually, answer to that is uh, uh, the uh, uh, we're not allowed to talk about mobile today, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hopefully, uh, that answered most of the uh, questions. And uh, thank you for coming by, and uh, enjoy the lunch.